So I think the amazing thing about Flying Lessons is it sort of combines all these authors who have very specific stories, often I think channeling parts of their childhood and, and parts of themselves that they aren't able to tell in maybe their other bigger works or bigger novels. And so what you get is this sort of like very specific, unique collection of stories that are so grounded in individual authors' voices. This book means a lot to me for many reasons. Um, I've been in children's publishing for more than 30 years. Growing up, I read a lot of fairy tales because there weren't hardly any realistic novels about a Chinese-American kid from New York City. Phoebe had just uh, started at Crown Books, and Ellen had just created this huge empire at uh, We Need Diverse Books and was sort of generating this huge movement behind this idea of getting more books that told very specific stories out there and were grounded more in, in authorial voices that we weren't used to seeing on shelves. And just the three of us together, like an author, someone running a, a We Need Diverse Books movement, and Phoebe as an editor, it just sort of naturally came up. Like, how could we use all these three things together? And that's, that's how it happened. It all, we came up with a list of authors at the table. When Ellen reached out to these authors, people were very committed to supporting the organization. Flying Lessons gave me and I think a lot of other authors in the collection a chance to show a different side of ourselves, a chance to show maybe a more personal side of ourselves. Tell a story that is yours, um, that is different. And I think that's what made the whole thing such a unique book. Because when you read it, the, the quality of each story is, is pretty spectacular. Every single contributor has won the most prestigious children's literary awards that are given um, in the U.S. So we have Newbery Award winners, we have a winner of the Bell Prey, we have New York Times best-selling authors, we have Coretta Scott King authors. I mean, it's just, talk about some of the best writers writing for children today. We were looking to tell a story that could grab a kid and make them see like, this is me, right? Tell, tell a story that would effectively be a mirror. Just as we need a mirror for ourselves, I firmly believe that the children out there need to also understand somebody else. The window aspect is as an important part of this equation. So I think the great thing about this book is it's so perfect for any sort of classroom or library setting. And I think part of it is I spend so much time on the road with kids. And, you know, a lot of them are great readers. A lot of them skip straight to the 600-page fantasy books. But, frankly, there's a number of readers who are scared of books, who won't pick up a novel, will only pick up a comic book or, or something graphic because they don't want to take the time to read a full book. And the great thing about Flying Lessons is it gives kids a chance to read in these small nuggets. And not only read these, these stories that are short, you know, 10, 15 pages, something that they can read you know, in one sitting, but it's also a story that they're going to connect with. As kids read these stories, this is what we want them to come away with. We want them to read Flying Lessons and either think of a relative or a friend that has that kind of impact on them.